What is up, everybody? I'm Bob. I'm an IT and cybersecurity educator and content creator. And welcome to a beginner's guide to cybersecurity and ethical hacking. I want to make this video and this, you know, this these lessons because I believe that a lot of people are intimidated by hack the box, by ethical hacking and cybersecurity in general. And I sort of want to help more beginners start to learn this stuff. And uh, I believe, you know, you, you've got to start somewhere. And there's so many different places and options and things out there that, you know, you can get caught up in going down paths that maybe aren't the best paths. Um, I'm not saying the one that I'm going to share is the absolute best, but I personally believe it's fantastic. I have a bias towards it. And before we get into the actual technical aspect of this, where I will show you some skills and help you develop some skills, I do want to talk a little bit about a platform, if you haven't heard about it, called Hack the Box. Hack the Box, I will say, honestly, is one of the only companies I can genuinely say when I hear about it, when I talk to people there, when, I'm, when I interact, with, I, I genuinely have love in my heart for this company. I have done work with them before uh, on actually on the Academy platform and I'm, I'm, I'm a regular player, a huge fan of the platform and pretty much everything they do. I see them as sort of the Apple Steve Jobs era of, of cybersecurity training. I think what they're doing is revolutionary, not just from a cybersecurity training perspective, but from an education perspective. Now, I'll show you, and I, I am biased towards it because I've benefited greatly from using it in my career professionally and just personally through people I've met, friendships I've made, fun times I've had, and the learning that has happened on this platform and continues to happen with me all the time. You know, I can't say I use it every day, but uh, I would say maybe every three days I'm back on here nowadays, especially in the summertime. I've got to say, so first of all, Hack the Box is a cybersecurity training company. They use gamification and a bunch of different things, innovation to create engaging cybersecurity training, specifically within the realm of ethical hacking. You will see more defensive content as they, they've released. They're releasing more defensive content regularly. So overall, they're, they're just a cybersecurity training company. On their website, you can see a lot about their culture and about who they are and who founded them and their history. They've got several products they've come out with over the years um, and big time money going into the company, you know, millions and millions of dollars that are getting invested in because I'm not the only one that believes in this company and this product. There's, you know, you know, businesses all around the world believe in them. Investors believe in them. Lots of people believe in them because of what's happening. And I'll explain it. These these are the founders, James Hooker, I call him Goblin, Harris Palerinos, Chap, Aries, or Azik, I, I believe. Um, awesome folks. You know, these, these are very accessible individuals. In the Discord, some of them are even there, you know, and the Discord's free very community focused organization. They really care about people and about making, you know, this very highly technical and specialized discipline that was once reserved for only a select few elite people. So when I say that, I mean like pen test, penetration testing, ethical hacking, and just cybersecurity as a discipline. It hasn't been this accessible just because of how difficult it is. And and I believe in many ways, Hack the Box does make it more accessible and does make it, I'll say, I'll use this word sparingly, easier than it has been historically. Let me explain that a little bit. I think before your Hack the Boxes, you, you didn't have many like pathways per se or easy ways to learn these skills. You, you really had to be cut from a different cloth, if you will, and you had to have some serious technical skills and you still need that. However, I believe what's happening with hack the box is there's getting more of a, you know, there's more training pathways. When I think about education in general, I believe, you know, always when there's a new innovation, there's a new field, usually learning institutions like 
colleges, they take a little while to get to a point where they have formalized textbooks, you know, content and courses and degrees to actually pave a way into that particular discipline. At first, it just starts usually like grassroots. There's only a few that know about it because it's brand new. Hack the Box is really interesting because it's not really paywalled. There's free tiers. Yes, there is paid subscriptions. And there's more pathways here and tracks that you can take now to start learning these skills. The reason I say earlier, I'm using the word easy sparingly or easier because cybersecurity in general is not an easy field just because of the nature of it. It's more, and I've explained this before in this way, it's like a sport, right? I mean, you do have to understand the underlying technology and the way it's used in order to secure it or let's say actively secure it because in my perspective, in my experience as an IT and cybersecurity professional, I don't think cybersecurity is a permanent state. And I don't know that you'll hear a lot of cybersecurity professionals declare that it is. It is an actively changing state. So, you know, let's say at one point in time, you can declare your environment secure. You're like, hey, this, this environment right here that I've built for this company or organization or person is secured. It's not going to stay that way, right, And by itself, right? You have to actively keep an eye out for the latest tactics, techniques, and procedures, the, the things that hackers are using, the vulnerabilities that are coming out in libraries and open source projects that are hard to, to catch day one, right? So th- technology in general is not just easy to secure. When you look at any piece of tech, you're going to see that it's usually made up of multiple different pieces of tech, a stack, if you will. A lot of software is built on open source and a lot of software is proprietary and both have, they have vulnerabilities that come up. People make mistakes or hackers get crafty. Sometimes these malicious hackers, they're just crafty and smart and they've figured out a way to bypass a security control and that gets discovered and you know that's time to to response is really important and we'll, we'll talk about some of those things but i just want to explain now that why hacking it's kind of controversial depending on who you're talking to they may tell you you know you may tell them you're a hacker and they'll tell you ah you know i'm scared of that you know and i'm not saying they'll they'll scream like that but they might gasp or some might say Wow, that's awesome. That's so cool. What do you do? Like, what is hacking? But I think still there's a stigma against hackers that's like every hacker's bad and that hacking is just, you know, if you you can't do it, that's not the way to do cybersecurity. And I've grown recently in my career to believe that hacking perspective is the way to do it. It's the way to do security, starting with that perspective and understanding the hacker like not everyone's going to be a full-time penetration tester what i'm saying is if but if you have the mindset of a hacker and you know some of the tools and the techniques and you're always trying to stay up to date on what's happening in that area you will have better defenses to guard against it right you know you the one way i can think about this is if you know you, you let's say you get a bulletproof vest right You buy it for whatever reason, and you're buying that bulletproof vest because you expect that that's going to probably protect you from bullets, right, if it's someone shot at you. But you would hope somebody tested that, right, before you bought it. So when I think about a computer network, when I think about a system, that's how I think about it too. You know, I'm hoping, yeah, okay, we've set it up. We believe we set it, like even myself, I believe I've set this thing up securely based on having some, you know, uh, hardening guides from respected organizations and, you know, having professionals on my team that know defense and things like that and expertise around me. But I don't really truly know if what I've set up is absolutely secure until I try to hack it. If I try to come in behind myself or someone else, a third party that didn't set it up with a new perspective comes in and tries to hack it, they might find something because they're approaching it from a different perspective. I might find something because when I come in to try to pen test something or hack it, especially when you look at like hack the box, I'm going to see 
vulnerabilities in a different light when I'm in the hacking mindset. So it's like something you can flick on like a switch as you develop it. And one thing that is big on the platform that I really agree with is developing the hacker mindset. But I do want you to know that I, I'm advocating for the ethical use of it, the legal use of these skills on systems that you have been given explicit written permission to do. You know, you know these the skills you might learn in, ter- in the ethical hacking realm or just pen testing realm in general you actively try to exploit a system that you haven't given been given permission to on some random website on the internet, you can probably get in trouble, maybe even get thrown in jail because it's illegal in a lot of countries. This is how it is in America. We have computer crime laws. You can't just go do this on anything. And that's where one of the big values of Hack the Box comes in too is you can, you can do ethical hacking and you can do pen testing on vulnerable machines, intentionally vulnerable machines that are realistic. And uh, you do that as much as you want legally because it's all on Hack the Box's lab environment. So this is a very revolutionary platform, in my opinion, in, in what they're doing. So let me break it down a little bit. I'll break down some of my motivations of using hack the box why i still use it to this day even as someone who has a job in the field who can pivot to companies because of my contacts and because of my skills and and who continues to learn from the platform but i will also explain how to use it from a beginner perspective that's the main thing that i really want to get across is is to beginners because i believe that that audience and the, that if you're in that realm and you consider yourself a beginner you're in the right place because I I really love to teach beginners because I I feel like I can relate to them Uh, I'm a teacher full-time I teach beginners all the time at a community college they come in normally with zero IT knowledge so I've had a unique experience with it which is why I really address it but I do think if you're a seasoned IT professional you can also benefit from you know the lessons I'm, I'm teaching here and the lessons that you'll learn on Hack the Box. I will ask you if you're not too comfortable on the couch or wherever you're watching me from, if you have a laptop or a desktop computer, go and create a, a, a Hack the Box account. So you can go to hackthebox.com, create an account real quick, go through the first little walkthrough of the tour of the platform. You know, you can pause this video if you want or, you know, if, Go on the stream right now. You can always record the stream back. This will be on YouTube. And and then come and catch up. Because when we get to the technical part, what I want you to do is, is follow along. And maybe even put comments and questions in the comments below that can add to the conversation. Or maybe even add context or perspective. That's the biggest way, if you're more experienced, that you can add to this these lessons is add context. You know, share... Uh, Share what your experience is with the platform or with the tools or with in the industry and, and, you know, all that. What are my motivations with Hack the Box? Why do I use it? There's a bunch of different motivations. I've been on Hack the Box for over a year just as a player, I'll say, and with an account and stuff. I've found that there's a few different ways you can use it and all of them are pretty awesome. Lately, the way that I've been using Hack the Box is because I want to rise in rank and this is hack the box, the main platform. They, there's also Academy, which is like more guided course format, which I'll show, I'll show that later on. But for now know that there's a leaderboard and there's a ranking platform and there's, there's a hall of fame. And this is, in my opinion, if you're a competitive and you start to feel the, you get the skills and you start to feel, and maybe even if you don't have the skills, but you just have a competitive drive I think the ranking aspect of it can really motivate you, you know, because there are people I've met in the Hack the Box Discord who say, you know, they don't hack as a profession. They do something else. Why do they hack then? They, They hack because they like it. They think it's fun. They think it's mentally stimulating. And when they get on Hack the Box, they just free their mind and try to break out of the box a little bit as they try to find vulnerabilities in the system. And in the meantime, they're developing some killer IT skills. I'm telling you, and we'll explain. I'll explain what kind of skills and and just even IT foundations you can build. That brings some people. 
me, I've recently come to this point where I'm like, I kind of want to be in the top 100 in the world. And I'm not there yet. I've just reached hacker rank recently. I was a noob, or I think it's, that's noob, noob or script kitty or one of the lower level ranks that you have. And I was on noob for like half a year because I was I was hardly ever working on content that would earn you points. Because there are pieces of content on Hack the Box that earn you points called active machines and, and active challenges. And I'll show you that. But let's say you just come in here, you just want to rank up. And you can see they've got graphs and they have a point system and they have this whole thing that you can follow to rank up on the platform. And it's really cool. You can see people who are, who are Hall of Fame around the world. You can see team rankings like you see these teams here hall of fame is like individuals i would like to get to the top 100 before i talk about getting any further than that i think you get a badge too which is like another gamification element they've added and, and that's one of the cool things is it feels like a game as you start to use it you're like okay i can kind of see the vision of how this is a video game and you know i think about any any hard video game that you've ever played, you could think about it. And it's like, you did have to grind to actually get good at it. You had to figure out the controls. You know, you had to figure out the controls. For, for the typical person that's not a gamer, think about this. Uh, this is not an easy thing to get used to controlling a character on the screen. As funny as that sounds, right? Like, you know... We take that for granted. I remember I recently got um, a Nintendo Switch. You know, it's 2023. I just got one. And I'm uh, the controls to me were weird to learn. I was like, what in the world? How come A is, where? why is X right there? You know what I mean? It should be Y. And it's like, so my brain was not used to that controller. So a lot of the games I've been learn playing, like I've been playing Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, is hard it's kind of hard to play because it's like you're learning these mechanics you're learning the switch controls on top of the mechanics of the game which are you know initially complicated so many menus and it's i sound old when i'm talking about it but it's like if you think about any modern game it can get it's pretty complicated when you first start to learn it especially if it's a new game to you and and you put in the time right you put in the effort you you and it, sometimes it's not that fun, right? Like you just want to get good at it so it can be fun. And that's one of the things that I really like about Hack the Box too. And when I make the correlation between video games, real like actual video games and then Hack the Box as a video game, they are very similar in the way that you just, if you don't give up and you keep learning the mechanics, the tools and the techniques and, and all that, you'll learn it. You'll get good. You can only get better if you keep trying, right? So when you think about the intimidation factor of Hack the Box, because it, it is intimidating, this field of cybersecurity is intimidating. The more you spend time trying to get better at it, the only option is to get better, even if it's just slow and incremental. And it's going to be. It's. I'll say this. Growth really never feels like growth until you look at, back at where you came from. In the midst of it, you're going to feel the growing pains. And to be honest with you, ethical hacking and the nature of penetration testing is usually just confusion. Confusion until you learn the concepts that you didn't know before and then all of a sudden it makes sense, right? You know, it's like, but it's con it's a constant humbling. I feel that when any time I'm doing a box, even if the box is like an easy ranked box, you know, I'm going to get humbled in some way. And that's awesome. You know, I love that because it means that there's always something new to learn. And that's one of the cool things about Hack the Box. So when we talk about the rankings and that gamification element, if you're competitive, this is awesome, right? So my goal by August, this is the, the start of June. It's really the end of May, but going into June of 2023, I want to get to the top 100 global ranking by August. I don't know if it's possible, but I, I need to get active and working towards that more more diligently. I challenge you as well. Make a goal for yourself on the Hack the Box platform to get to a certain rank or to a certain leaderboard level. Let's see how far you can go. 
That's it. If you care about ranks, but that it doesn't have to be all about ranks. Last thing about the ranking thing, you know, it may feel like a gamification thing that only matters on Hack the Box, but I do know, I've seen the Discord, I've also seen out on LinkedIn and job posts, that there are companies that actually, if you're on Hack the Box, you, you, they will actually consider your rank. Now, is your rank going to disqualify you? Probably not, but if you have a higher rank, you know, hacker, pro hacker, above... They are impressed by that because it shows you put in significant effort on learning this stuff on your downtime. I know there's even organizations that build some Hack the Box content into their hiring processes so you can bypass certain checks, resume check or something like that, which is really profound. And that's like a, that's revolutionary. And on that note, let me show you another reason you may want to use Hack the Box to learn. And this is a reason I really think is kind of going to change the landscape a little bit. This is revolutionary. As more companies under, start to understand the value of Hack the Box and platforms like it, I do think they're going to start doing this. This is some thought leadership. So Hack the Box has a job board, which is cool, right? And let's look at this at let's look at how the gamification is added. Notice this job, right, at this company called SecForce. It was posted 16 days ago through Hack the Box, so meaning that company and Hack the Box worked together to make sure that this job posting was here, right, for people that use Hack the Box. But let's say I'm like, you know, I want a job. I'm looking for a job as a pen tester or in the cybersecurity realm. Let me check the job board on Hack the Box. Let's say I thought this was a good one. Look as I hover over it. Pro hacker rank required. Ooh, you know what that does to me? If I'm looking for a job personally, I'm right now I'm pretty happy with what I'm doing. But if I'm getting on here to look for a position and I see that, wait, hold on, pro hacker rank, I can't apply for that one? I'm going to try to go get pro hacker. You know, I'm also going to look for others. Look, I'm eligible for this one. I think this one's hacker, limited to hacker rank. You know, this one's pro hacker you know, hacker rank, I can, I can apply for this, right? And this is, of course, Hack the Box eating their own dog food, meaning, you know, hey, look, if we're going to ask other companies to use our job board, we're going to use our own job board as well. You better believe some of these companies are probably going to really pay special attention to the applicants coming through Hack the Box, because if you think about it, it's new. It's an innovative way to kind of get talent. It's a different pipeline. I'm not saying it's the only one. It's not gatekeeping. I don't think that's what Hack the Box's goal is. If I could speak to their goals. If I know anything about Hack the Box and the time I've been connected with Hack the Box and, and known about the platform and, and met people through the Discord and met people there and made friends, I can say they're not trying to gatekeep cybersecurity, but I could say they're building a different type of pathway or series of pathways and opportunities in and I think that's a really innovative approach to learning because now I have a bigger reason to use hack the box than to just say oh my rank is this and I'm I'm feeling fancy and you know I can hack on hack the box and I you know I'm cool but now it's like okay I can get on hack the box and it can be some life-changing opportunities through using it by job getting jobs and all types of stuff so this is just an, another reason to use it. What I want to show you here is sort of how they break up their machines and their challenges. Simply put, there's active machines and there's retired machines. Active machines, if you do these, they're going to count towards your rank. You cannot stream these. You know, you cannot publish write-ups. You're, you're violating the terms of service if you create content based on an active machine and you publish it while that machine is active or that challenge because they do have challenges you can download, you know, app, Android apps, uh, forensics challenges, you know, other things that are not a whole VM is not needed for because these are VMs that get spawned. Like these are real machines that get spawned up on Hack the Box environment. And I'll show you that too. So retired machines are not going to earn you points. So if you do these, you're not getting points on the platform or towards your rank, but you are going to learn. So here's the thing. 
I think for the first half a year that I was using Hack the Box and to learn ethical hacking skills uh, and penetration testing skills, I did not move past that first rank. I just did retired machines and I live streamed several of them. One of my big drives of using Hack the Box really was to stream, just as a creator, to stream Hack the Box machines, retired machines. I would get on here, I would pick a box randomly, start it up, and then start my stream. And I would learn on live stream and talk about a humbling experience. It, it is because you're running into problems. You, you know, on a live stream, you would hope you could just breeze through and look just perfect, right? Ideally, you know, but I think in the smaller settings and like the groups that I would have, you know, it, it would go from five to 10 to, to 50. I would get more than that at some points just working on a box with me live. It was like a meetup. I had an online live meetup and it was cool because you were learning in a community environment. So if you hit a problem, you might get somebody in the chat saying, Hey, try this. I just tried it. It got me a little bit further and boom, you're there. And, and, and here's the cool thing about hack the box. Hack the box is very creator friendly. So in their terms of service, they document this Google, like, can I live stream hack the box? You can Google that and then it'll come up with, the very specifics about what you can live stream. I know retired machines and retired challenges, retired content in general, you can live stream and you can create content based off of, right? Like videos and write-ups and things and publish that. And I think that's great because for your career, especially if you're trying to break in, a lot of these uh, people that are going to be interviewing you, they want to look for more than a resume. They want to see, what have you done? What kind of experience have you had? You know, you, you hear this thing is like you breaking into cybersecurity is hard because entry level roles in cybersecurity, you know, require this many years of experience or whatever to accelerate past through some of those requirements. If you can have things like blog posts, you can show you're pretty active and you're different. You're not just coming in expecting a job because you have a degree or because you want it. You're showing them, okay, I've got some content I've produced. I've got some contributions that I've provided. This is my writing ability. This is my skills right now. You're giving that hiring manager more to work with than just, you know, here's a resume and I have a degree and I have some of this. You're giving them more because you think about if you have other candidates going in with the same thing, but they don't have hack the box and, and write ups and they don't have all these blog posts that, like you, then you have a unique advantage, right? I think hack can provide a unique advantage for people out there in the job market. Let's poke into one of these retired machines. I'll show you the machine page. You know, it's pretty self explanatory. It tells you what you can do. You can add it to a to do list, review it once you're done. There's threads for them in a forum. But the biggest thing for me that was driving me. And still drives me to do retired machines. I don't do retired machines as much as I did. I, I'm, I'm on that active machine life because of the ranking now. Right now, for example, like what we're going to do in this video is, is going to be through a starting point machine, a free machine, doesn't earn points. You know, you could do the same with a retired machine. I can do that because it doesn't violate the terms of service. But it also gives you an awesome learning opportunity. And here's why. Let's say you're doing one of these machines. You're learning and you hit a wall. You can go to this walkthroughs tab and you can look at a walkthrough. Now, there's no shame in looking at that walkthrough. You just have to be careful not to get so reliant on walkthroughs that that's, you know, that's your mindset on every single box you do. Because you do want to ultimately build a, a skill set where... You can do some of this stuff off the top of your head or using various, you know, articles or building a command cheat sheet or a playbook of commands that you typically run when you're going against a machine. I say that because when you do this in the real world, you won't always come across walkthroughs for those problems. I always encourage you to look up things and Google things, but when it comes to the boxes on Hack the Box, there's walkthroughs. Use them. I'll read a walkthrough even if I didn't need it during the box. Like even if I didn't go through the box and reference the walkthrough during and I just got through it by myself, I will still read the walkthrough. 
because it shows different ways of doing things and you learn different commands and different pro tips from different people like the way they did things might have been better than the way you did it or the way I did it. It's really cool to do that and build a skill set that way. I've got to talk about two awesome creators that are Hack the Box creators, uh, Ipsec or I-P-P-S-E-C, who makes YouTube videos for every retired machine as soon as it retires. Ipsec is posting his video on YouTube faithfully very persistently and very with high quality and it's a lot to learn you're going to learn a lot when you watch a walkthrough from ipsec oxdf is great he does write-ups i believe he also has a youtube channel but most of his content is in written form on his blog it's oxdf hack stuff you could google that i'll put some of the some of this in the comments below or in the description below too so those are great Go to resources. Here's the cool thing, right? And they, oh, by the way, this is OXDF right here. He he has a write up for this box. The other thing is, check this out. This is user submitted walkthroughs. If you're going to be doing a write up, you're taking notes during the box, and you turn the notes into something a little bit more, and it becomes an educational walkthrough of some kind, you can click this button, which is behind my head. I'll just show you the results of me hitting the button. Submit walkthrough, and you can add the URL. You'll submit it, and what will happen is people at Hack the Box will QA that, and they will say, is this appropriate? Is this, does this work? You know, is this good? Does this look good? And if it's good enough, it's up to par, they'll add it to the platform. And that's something, if I were you, I would put on your resume. You know, because in, in a way, you contributed supplementary learning material via user submission form on Hack the Box to such and such machine that covered and you could talk about like various technologies that you talked about and link to that in your resume or on your LinkedIn or whatever platform you're using to look for work or to look for different opportunities, whatever it is. I'm just saying like that right there, you can use that as a career resource, a professional development resource too. And even just as a challenge, I'll show you on my blog, just an idea of how I would do a walkthrough is this one. This was a retired machine called Netmon. And as I was doing the box, I was just adding notes to this Git book I have. Git book's free. You can go to Git book right now and you can create a free website and you don't have to pay for it. You can host your, your web page there and you don't have to write in HTML. You don't have to worry about all that if, if you don't want to. And, you know, I would put screenshots up here. And as I'm going, I'll type what's in the screenshot. And I'm, I'm almost entering in like a reflection. As I'm doing it, I'm trying to understand what I'm learning. And I'm also explaining it too. I'm an educator, but I also, when I'm learning, I try to format what I'm learning into something that I can teach, if that makes sense. I call that learn to teach as a sort of a methodology, a learning methodology. If you can do that, you you start to, I believe, you start to better understand what you're learning because then you're looking at everything as a teacher. You want to understand it at a deep enough level that you can explain it in a way that would make sense to someone. And that's going to force you to try to seek for a deeper understanding of it. Even if you're not, planning on being an educator, teacher, creator, I do still think that that is very helpful because what else does that show? If you're trying to be a penetration tester, for example, or I would, I would argue any position in cybersecurity, whether it's on the defensive or the offensive side, there's a tremendous need for the ability to write well. If you can do this, you're working on your writing skills. And I know I'm not perfect, but that's a skill that I'm actively building and one that you can actively try to build through doing boxes and challenges on Hack the Box. That's another drive and motivator for me. You've got tracks here, which are are like pathways. They're just like curated, you know, lists of, of machines and challenges that have a theme. Hack the Box does these CTFs, which are really cool, where it's like a, a theme and a storyline and and they happen for a certain period of time and they're, they're, they're challenges. 
If you don't know what a CTF is, basically, uh, I'll put it this way, a CTF-like challenge is you're trying to find vulnerability in a system to get access to that system, and then you're going to find a flag. And that flag essentially verifies that you are able to exploit the vulnerability. With Hack the Box, there's typically on a box two flags when we're talking about just machines. And our user, and then there's root or system level if you're Windows, which is like the, the ultimate admin of a Windows machine. You usually get the skill of getting the initial access, whether it's through like a web application or some vulnerable service. And then there's how, how can you escalate your privileges to a higher level of administrative privileges on that system. And so you'll get flags for both of those things. Now, I do know that they have, I could talk about this another time. I do have other videos on my channel. I did do a review on one of their pro labs that's called Dante, which was amazing. And it's essentially an environment that's completely, it's a completely vulnerable environment. So it's not just one box, it's multiple. Like you can see, Dante has 14 machines. Those are Windows boxes, Linux boxes, Windows Server, Windows Clients. Offshore is like big and active directory, and they're always coming out with new pro labs. And these are really cool. I will say these are my favorite personal products. I will call them my innovations on Hack the Box are the pro labs because they're so real. It's a whole environment you're attacking. And you have to chain attacks and you have to be sort of strategic about the way you move further into an environment. You may be able to individually exploit a vulnerability on one machine, but depending on how you do it, it might that particular way of exploiting vulnerability may not allow you to, to use that machine to pivot to another machine. So you have to think, how should I exploit this so I can maintain persistence and move further? So that's where the the pro labs are really cool. I love me some pro labs for sure. I'm working on offshore, as you can see, I haven't made much progress. I'm working on it. It's fun, learning a lot. There's end games. Some of them are retired. They're like mini pro labs. So there's like, you know, four or three machines. And so it does feel still like more of a network environment than like an individual machine does. These retired end games you could stream, which is really cool. Fortresses, I've never done one, but I I know that companies make them. So, uh, look, these are big names that make these fortresses. And I believe if you finish one of these, you unlock something specific to that company. I think about the concept of this fortress idea is it makes sense for companies to say, okay, we need more web app pen testers what does that skill set look like? And then they build like a lab host or work with hack the box to build a specific lab to like, for example, whatever AWS wants, whoever finishes it seems like a pretty good candidate. You know what I mean? So that's kind of a unique way to recruit too. You could use these as recruitment tools. You could use these in the hiring process. Maybe one phase is like a technical challenge and you have them use your fortress as an employer. You have them use your hack the box fortress to create a penetration testing report of this fortress. And that determines where they are as a candidate. You know, maybe you don't expect they get through the whole thing, but, you know, as far as they can get. And then that's how you assess candidates and, and technical proficiency. But that's just an idea. I'm sure some companies have thought of that. As a beginner, wouldn't start on any of these. I wouldn't start on end games, pro lab fortresses, or battlegrounds. I would start at starting point, and that's where we're gonna start. I hope that you'll join me in that in the next video.